On initial installation, after the trap has been installed, your line is obviously depressurized. The unit will be in an open position on the, on the inlet isolation valve. The outlet isolation valve will be closed, and we recommend that the two blowdown valves be open. Okay, we want to turn steam on to the trap from an external source, and what will happen is the trap will more than likely come on, the inlet side will blow down the strainer to remove any dirt, any possible dirt from the installation unit will be blown free. Okay, and what we want to do uh, is make sure that makes isolation valve is open fully. Okay, two turns open, and we'll close down the strainer blowdown valve. Okay. The test valve is still open, and what we'll do here is just look, watch that for a second or so. As long as the trap is operating properly, uh, periodically that test valve will see, you'll have discharge coming out of it. Now, right now, the, the return line is still isolated. Okay, what we'll do now is then open up the return side. And if you get steam out of the test valve on a continuous basis, that would indicate there's actually steam and vapor coming from other parts of the system, which is why we typically want to close that valve to, to do the actual test on the unit itself. In this particular case, the trap is working fine. We have no back pressure coming from any other traps in the system. You can tell that the uh, trap is shutting off perfectly, and periodically it's going on and off. At this point, we can pretty much close the test valve, and the unit is ready to roll. In normal operation, if you want to test the trap, what we want to first do would be open up the test valve, so you can see some discharge coming out of it. In order to make sure that we're not getting any backflow from any other traps in the system, we'll isolate the outlet valve and watch for operation. A normally operating thermodynamic trap, for example, will periodically cycle on and off with a snap type discharge as you're seeing clearly here. Slow trap will have a modulating type discharge which may be a little harder to determine what's going on. Bucket traps, again, will have a cycling discharge. Thermostatics, again, back to a modulation. If you have a constant discharge coming out of the discharge port and you want to make sure that it isn't steam and it's just condensate, what we can also do is open up the inlet side. That will drain condensate away from the trap itself and the trap should throttle down. Now, you can see in this particular case, there's very little water coming out, mostly vapor. The trap is staying closed. If we had a heavy load on it, you would see a, a stream of condensate flowing out of there. And after a minute or two, that valve should slow down or come to a full stop. If it doesn't, you can pretty safely say there's something wrong with that particular trap. Again, with a CD, in many cases, because of the cyclical operation, we don't necessarily need to open the front blow down, but we can. Now, if you just want to blow down the strainer periodically, we can leave the test valve in the closed position, and the only thing we need to do there is open up the strainer blow down valve, which also diverts concrete away. A few turns is all we need to do. Let it blow for a few seconds, and reclose. If the valve doesn't close tightly, Open and close it a few times because we may have lodged a piece of dirt under the ball head. And by doing that, we could probably dislodge it and again get a good seal. Now, if the trap happens to be cold for some reason, uh, one or two things could be occurring. Uh, there could be a blockage in the return line, or there could be a blockage upstream. But with the return line valve open, okay, and let's assume right now the trap is not flowing. Opening up this front blowdown valve with this valve open, open or closed, really doesn't matter. If we're getting flow out of there, that would obviously mean that there's no blockage upstream. Okay? No flow out of that point under any circumstance indicates there's a blockage upstream or the steam has been closed off somewhere upstream.
If we've determined that the trap is bad and needs replacement, first thing we want to do is go over and close both isolation valves. And assuming we're also going to be closing down steam upstream somewhere, okay, so that we don't back up condensate unless this can be done in a relatively quick fashion, open both flow down valves up to remove any pressure from the trap station and the trap itself. With that, we've now guaranteed that the entire unit is completely just depressurized and we can remove the trap. If for some reason, when you open the blowdown valves up and you're getting a constant bleed of steam, that would indicate that there is a failure possibly in the inlet valve, which means you would now have to shut steam up upstream to ensure safe removal of the trap. At the same time, if you're going to do that, you could replace the valve assembly in that particular unit if it's not holding tight. And again, you may want to, if, it's, if you're not getting a shutdown, open and close the valve a few times with that blowdown valve open to check it. So you can come over and go, you know, open that up, close it, open, close, open, close. And if there's a piece of dirt or debris lodged in that valve, typically we would pass through the system. If you do that and it does not shut down, you do not attempt to loosen the traps because there's a possibility of being burned. Okay. Once the trap is replaced, we're going to reverse the process. Uh, we're going to open up again the inlet valve. Okay. Assuming that the steam was just brought back on, we have both of the blowdown valves open. We have the isolation valve on the outer side open. We close down the blowdown. Okay, the trap is right now discharging. Trap shuts off, indicating that everything's working fine. Close that valve off, and we're back into normal operation.